Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. <laughs> Disney removed Ray and Finn's romance from the Force Awakens novelization. Should this have been kept? Some of the best Star Wars stories are in the books and comics of the franchise, while much of the older such material is now the non-canon Star Wars expanding universe. Rebranded legends after Disney's acquisition, post-merger books are considered canon. A veteran movie novelization author, the excellent Alan Dean Foster, recently revealed some of the hard choices he had to make for his recent Star Wars books based on the movie, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Some of these decisions show a further marginalization of Finn at the direction of Disney. Foster recently spoke with Midnight Edge on YouTube at length about his career, taking questions from the audience as well. He explained his process for screenplay and adaptations. I did my usual thing when I do these adaptations of trying to fix things that I need fixing in the story and fixing in the science. Not so much with the characters because the characters are fairly well established in a screenplay. Some things they said to take out and some things they left alone. Some of the things they said to take out I thought were silly and would really have improved the book if I had been able to leave them in the book, but I can't talk about those. Later on, Foster revealed a few more things he removed from recent Star Wars adaptations at the studio's direction. They asked him to eliminate a romantic plot point between Finn and Ray. I'm going to tell you one thing they made me take out because enough time has passed. I don't think it matters. First thing was there was obviously the beginnings of a relationship between John Boyega's character and Daisy Ridley's character, Ray. I expected to see that develop further in episode, I think that's eight, The Last Jedi, and Zero happened with it. And we all know why Zero happened with it, and there's no need to go into it in debt. But that's sadly just the way things are. Foster also removed a callback moment to Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. There's a scene in the film and in the book where Rey has come aboard the Millennium Falcon, and Han Solo can't get things to work, and she fixes it. Han Solo says something to the effect of good work or good job. Reluctantly, he says it. And then I had him say, don't get cocky, kid, which of course is a throwback to what he says to Luke in the first film. I thought that was a wonderful way of connecting the character to the first film and the first story. I thought fans would love that, and they made me take it out. Though kind of annoying, the removal of the callback scene is far less impactful than the removal of the budding romance scene. Full disclosure, I am not a fan of romance shoved into my space sagas. I wholly blame Star Wars for this because I always liked how Leia and Han's relationship brewed slowly over three movies. From Foster's comments, something similar was initially in the works for Finn and Rey. When the first trailer for Star Wars Episode Seven dropped, Finn's character looked like an integral part of the storyline. As the third and final trilogy progressed, it was painfully evident that he was not. It is no secret that John Boyega was not happy with how Disney handled Finn's character in the Star Wars franchise. Boyega recently opened up about his true feelings regarding his experience working on the Star Wars films. His comments were met with support and outrage from across the fan base. His frustrations were not dissimilar to those experienced by other creative persons of color. These issues have been around for a long time. The list of such treatment continues to grow as more come forward to share their experiences. Studios are finally attempting to address concerns rather than suppress or deny them. However, this will not happen overnight. Can things change? During a roundtable with The Hollywood Reporter in 2015, Jordan Peele talked about some of the notes received from Comedy Central executives for his show, Key and Peele. Peel lauded the network for allowing and sometimes pushing Peel and his partner Keegan Michael Key on their show's writing and direction. He joked that when it came to some of their sketches' racial content, they could always play the race card because there were no black executives to contradict them. Another guest in the roundtable, Don Cheadle, chimed in with Peel that if they ever did hire a black executive, they might finally get called on some of their choices. 
Peel added, thank God Hollywood does not hire black executives. Cheadle said jokingly, you're safe. That'll never happen. While the whole exchange was tongue in cheek, there was an underlining underlying current of painful truth in their statements like all great comedy. Fast forward to 2020 and things are progressing, albeit glacially. More high profile BIPOC, BIPOC creatives are taking a stand. Thanks to brave voices like those of John Boyega, Shonda Rhimes, Robert Leonard, and Ray Fisher, we are now finally hearing more about the true nature of the BIPOC Hollywood experience. Actual change will only occur once the talent roster and executive suites features the same representation the studios are attempting to showcase on screen. UCLA's Hollywood Diversity Report from February of 2020 reveals the following from its review of 11 major and mid-sized film studios led by Dr. Darnell Hunt, Dean of Social Sciences and Professor of Sociology and African American Studies at UCLA. Researchers found that 91% of studio heads are white. The percentage is even higher, one level down at 93%. Two levels down, the percentage is 86% white. Even if studio boys wanted to promote voices of color from within their ranks, they would have a tough time doing so with their current talent bench. With Jordan Peele's enormous post key and Peele's success, he may become the outside solution to black representation in the studio executive suites. Foster has his own fight with Disney right now over money, owed for his other work. I sincerely hope he and the other authors can reach a fair agreement with Disney about their previous work. Foster did not have to add fuel to the already burning BIPOC fire. Many of us are glad he did bring it to our attention as more BIPOC voices come forward. We may finally see some changes in how far stories are told, even in galaxies far, far away. So, basically, what do you think? Do you think um they have a point? Um, to me, the Ray and Finn thing. Um, that's where I thought the story was finna go. Was a centered around Ray and Finn, and everybody else would just be you know, basically, basically, um, how do I say it? That everybody around would basically be the, um, the co-character, like the, like the, um, the supporting cast would be around them. I thought they would be the focal point. The way the, the trailer seemed like for Force Awakens, I thought Finn was going to have a bigger role in the, in the rest of them. I thought, hell, he was going to be a Jedi. You know, <laughs> because, you know, I was thinking, oh, this might be Mace Windu's son. But then they were like, no, they gave it to the girl. And then then the story after Last Jedi, it just it was garbage to me. I don't care what anybody say. The Rise of Skywalker was trash. All right. It was garbage. Now, The Last Jedi and Force Awakens. I liked those two movies. Those two movies were pretty good. Those were good movies. And to me, what messed it up was was number three. Number three, you had a storyline brewing where Finn was with the Asian chick and then you had Ray look like she was going to go with Dameron Poe. So to me, the romance and this stuff, to me, it, to me, we already know what it is. Disney does not want black or white interaction. And plus in Star Wars, now that they, they got, I think they own it now, um basically what they can do they can put whoever they want out there and they always make the black characters the bad guy or the swindler like i was alluding to i think i could talk about it and i think everybody's seen the mandalorian if you didn't i'm sorry for spoiling it carl weathers was playing basically a crooked guy <laughs> a crooked guy um a head guy of of of, of, of his um of his part he had he was he was leading all the bounty hunters the part he stayed in and to me it's like why does the black guy always got to be the swindler or the con artist and then and then at the end they started making him you know they started turning him to start you know being good because the kid saved him and things like that and he was supposed to double cross them and then he turned to their side and then they made you know, even though Gideon, uh, Maz Gideon, I think that's, is that, is that how you say his name? Hold on. 
I always forget that character's name um in in the Mandalorian. I always forget that character. That was my favorite character. Yeah, Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon, they always make the black guy as the lead bad actor. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the dark side. I like, to me, if I was to pick, I would pick either in the middle or I would be a Sith. <laughs> I would be either one, but I would be... I would be in the middle where I could control the power of the Jedi and the power of the Sith. Um, that's how, to me, that's how I felt they should have gone in part three. Ray should have just denounced the Jedi and the Sith and she became rogue and do what she wanted to do. You know, and then she's like, my name is Skywalker. And then she kissed, um, what was his name? Um, Kylo Ren. And that was like the weirdest scene. I'm like, why would you have them kiss? They had no chemistry <laughs> of that in a, the whole movie. It's like, what are you doing? And then Kylo Ren had his mask off. That's why I love the Mandalorian because he kept his mask off. He only kept, he only took it off in essential parts of the story where they needed him to. But other than that, he had the mask on. And that's something that Star Wars has to understand. When you have a bad guy with a mask, that's what makes them great. That's what makes them believable. That's why nobody liked the goddamn um 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 series or the, the new Star Wars. That's why nobody liked it. Because Kylo Ren kept taking his helmet off. When Kylo Ren had the helmet on on the first one, and you were you were intrigued by that. That made you want to watch it. But the, the romance and everything of, of what happened is, I understand it because Disney is racist and prejudiced. Racist and prejudiced. All these companies are racist and prejudiced. Prejudice, excuse me. That's why things, that's why I don't understand when people come out and say, well, why does everything got to be about race? Because it is, idiot. <laughs> to me, I thought that the way they were depicting it it was going to be about Finn. To me, what Star Wars should have done was make it about Finn and Rey. They should have focused around them. They should have had their relationship go somewhere instead of bringing this Asian girl in and then bringing damn Poe in and, and all the Dameron Poe in and all this stuff Ryan Johnson did. Now, it was a great movie Ryan Johnson um, um, directed, but I'm just saying I would have had it a different way. To me... The way you had it was you were promoting Finn and Ray's relationship. That's what you should have done. That's what you should have kept at. But no, like I told you the numbers, 91%, the 93%, the 86% is mostly white. And then if they bring a black character in like the movie Solo, I didn't see the movie Solo, but they were making, um, um, hold on. I forgot the guy name. Yeah, Lando Calrissian, they were making him sort of feminine in the movie, sort of Swedish, <laughs> but he ain't from Sweden, if you know what I mean, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, that's how they make us, they want to make us like that, and to me, that is not the right way, and they're going to continue doing it, and that's why Star Wars is going to have trouble with the black community because you're not promoting the right guys you're not making it you know equal on both sides you know you're not making it you had mace windu in um the other series you only had him in there for a few parts you only had um samuel in there for a few parts it was like what the hell are you doing like i wanted to know more about him and more of the other people that's the thing that star wars used to be about it used to be about characters like that's why I love the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian got it right. It wasn't just focused on the little kid or the Mandalorian. Even though they were the focal point of the series, they were they were the focal point, but it was the supporting cast. It's like if you play sports. If you played sports, you understand this terminology. When you play basketball and football, it's not about one guy, it's about the team. Even if a guy 
goes off for a bunch of points in basketball. It's still about the team setting him up to get that pass and setting picks for him and back screens for him to get open to hit the shot or to score under the basket. Or in football, they could run crossing routes. Some receivers set pick plays, which they basically they're saying it's not pick plays, but it is because they're crossing. So the defenders will bump into each other and the guy will come open. That's sacrifice. Even when the fullback's blocking for the running back, that's sacrifice. That's the thing I didn't see out of these stories of Star Wars. I didn't see enough sacrifice. I didn't see enough development from everybody. Like, I wanted to know more about Dameron Poe. Like, he he was great in the first two films. I thought he was going to take a step up. They basically destroyed his character. And then John Boyega, I feel him. I will be pissed off about the thing with Finn too because Finn was actually developing into a great character and then you just destroyed it. I wanted to see where him and Ray went with their relationship. You destroyed that. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? And, and this is the problem with movies and companies like this. That's why I keep telling fellow black people of color or minorities they are racist and prejudice. They're going to stay that way. Look, 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 look at the Capitol building the past few days. I didn't make nothing on it because I wanted you guys to see. It. They allow white people to storm a Capitol building, not getting shot, not getting tear gas, not getting nothing. But, oh, if it was all black behind, oh, they gunning us down before we get to the front door, before we even try to climb the wall. And then... And then this is funny. They usually call black people monkeys. The joke's on you, pink folk. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit the notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if you would like to donate to the page, you could cash at me at the word welcome, the number two, and then HDII TV. Thank you for listening, and we are out. Deezy.